the abyss. Made in Abyss is a series that I've discussed numerous times here on the channel, and for good reason too. It's a series that I hold very dear to my heart, and honestly, I wanted to talk about it yet again, so here we are. Plus, with an upcoming second season coming out, I believe it's ample time for me to discuss this anime once again in a bit of a review format to sort of relay my thoughts on the first season. So with that being said, I'm not going to waste your time here, let's actually just jump straight into what I like about Made in Abyss. One of the first things I want to mention about Made in Abyss that I quite enjoy is sort of the role that it establishes. Centered around the abyss of course, a lot of subtle world building is actually concocted mere moments into the first episode. The danger we witness as Rico encounters a crimson split jaw early on sets the stage for the nature of the abyss. Now you may be asking yourself what is the nature of the abyss, well it's horrific actually. We learn rather quickly that the abyss is home to a host of dangerous creatures, but the real danger lies in the pit's effects on those who dare to face it. Ascending to the top of the abyss after departing deep into its layers can either turn you into a monstrosity or a furry, which if you ask me, I can't really tell you which is the worst fate. Jokes aside, I think that given the severity of the effects that the netherworld can have on its victim, it says a lot about our protagonist Rico's courage to want to face such a challenge. Her willingness to put her life on the line despite knowing full well that it can mean her death either speaks to her naivete about the abyss, which I think is less likely, or speaks to her spirit and determination, which I think is one of her biggest strengths as a character. Given this and a couple of other reasons I'll go into in just a moment, Rico is probably one of my favorite characters, and I think honestly a lot of people tend to sleep on her when it comes to, you know, her being their favorite. I mean, despite all odds pretty much being stacked against her, she's willing to head to the bottom of the abyss, which is pretty badass if you ask me. She would pretty much have to leave her friends and family and loved ones behind just to pretty much meet the goal of actually finding her mother at the bottom of the abyss and also becoming a white whistle just like her mother. Now personally I wouldn't have this kind of level of bravery but I admire it nonetheless. Now it's not to say that she's ill equipped for such a feat. Rico's skills as a cave raider for the Beltro Orphanage definitely come into play and are definitely handy in her situation. She's able to cook modestly well and also knows a lot about the abyss and its inner workings, and in terms of technical knowledge, she's well above the pay grade of most Red Whistles. Plus alongside her, she has her capable companion Reg, who we'll get into in just a moment, but given all this, she's reasonably well equipped for someone that isn't a White Whistle to be for someone delving into the abyss. Now Reg makes her journey all the more feasible given his robotic equipment makes it more easy to descend into the abyss. His blaster alongside his Ascendo arm allow for them to get out of a handful of situations pretty much unharmed or at least, for the most part, mostly unharmed. <laughs> Reg is the perfect partner Rico, being the more calm and rational one amongst the two when it comes to decision making. While Rico's quick on her feet decision making does come in handy in quite a few situations, Reg's cautious approach is definitely good to have on her side when it's necessary. However, Rex's slower reaction time does have his downsides as well, with him almost losing Rico due to him overthinking the process of removing the poison from her body. If not for the fan favorite character Nanachi, honestly it would have probably been the end of their journey right then and there. Speaking of this scene in particular, I think one of the things I really enjoy about Made in Abyss is that it does not pull its punches. These gruesome moments stand out for anyone on their first watch, because these scenes are brutal and heart wrenching the first time around. They don't sugarcoat the fact that the abyss is a terrifying place and that luck is definitely on the side of our protagonist when it comes to them getting this far. Had it not been for Nanachi like I said, they would have had to roll the credits for the show much sooner. Even experienced delvers such as the White Whistles have to actually suffer quite a bit on their descent, so it makes sense why the difficulty would be spiked for our inexperienced duo. The show does not make this seem like it's going to be an easy task for Rico at all, not by a long shot. She knows she's going to have to face turmoil if it means exploring the depths of the netherworld, and that she does. With characters like Mami Ozen coming along to pulverize Reg into a tin can, and crazed men like Bondru turning people into whatever this is, suffice to say it's a lot for our protagonist to be up against. Moving on from speaking about sort of the plot elements of the show, I want to drift into talking about the visuals of Made in Abyss because they're stunning to say the least. The show has a way of immediately encapsulating you into the world that Akihito has designed for Made in Abyss. Panic shots display the city of Orph which is developed around the Great Pit as the narrator just goes over the lore of this wonder and I feel like it's just perfect the way they do it. Though Made in Abyss has a little bit of a less traditional anime art style, I feel like the direction they went in faith with the manga suits the characters well and captured moments like this fairly well. And that's not to mention the ties that the visuals actually have with the composition work done by Kevin Pinkin, who did such a wonderful job with the series that he actually won an award for Made in Abyss, which goes to show how well the score actually works in tandem with the show's moments. Now while I would love to showcase some of the music and how they work in tandem with the anime moments, YouTube would be very swift in striking me down so I have to be careful here. YouTube's been very swift on demonetizing me in the past for copyright material so if you actually want to support me, Please do actually go buy some Made in Abyss shirts here on screen right now, because I think they look pretty cool and honestly it helps to support the channel. 
Regardless, getting back on track, I think the show's thematic elements are really supported by the visual musical work done on the show, which is something that I really do like about the show. It really emphasizes the majestic and alluring nature of the Abyss while still having a bit of an eerie undertone at moments, which is just the right kind of combination that sort of fits the anime's tones. Honestly, for all the reasons I've listed here, I think Made in Abyss is probably one of my favorite anime at the moment. Our protagonists are befitting of one another, and I can't help but root for them as they journey into the netherworld. Thus, my investment sort of makes me all the more hurt when they actually do suffer, but it's a good trade-off, honestly. The story is simple, you have a hero's journey into the unknown, and we as viewers get to watch as they propel themselves onward, facing new challenges and meeting new faces along the way. However, what makes Made in Abyss so special is the execution of this archetype, which really does keep you engaged the entire 12 episodes. Overall, given everything I've said here today, I hope I was able to communicate my love for the series. It's easily one of my favorites, and if you haven't seen it, then you definitely should give it a chance because I promise you it will not disappoint. Anyways, that's it. Before you go, let me know what you guys saw in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Also, if you want another video to watch, I made a Spike Family video, which you should definitely watch. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and peace out.